Do you enjoy covering your friends and random strangers in a wide variety of vibrant colored ink? If you answered yes, then we have the perfect game for you! Splatoon, Nintendo's newest and possibly weirdest game has players running about as half-squid, half-humanoid beings called Inklings, who spend the majority of their time covering everything and each other in environmentally safe paint. Good for you, Nintendo! Finally we have a game that really cares! Assuming the paint isn't lead-based, the protagonist of this promising franchise is Agent 3, an inkling on a quest to recapture these weird electric fish thingies and save Inkopolis from the worst energy shortage since before you were born, probably. Our hero fights the dreaded Octarians, a clan of tentacle-based octo-humanish weirdos who stole the great Zapfish in retaliation for losing a war or something. Agent 3 travels through a world seemingly like our own, but filled only with Inklings and Octarians. Fish people, but no people people. So in what world and time does this story take place? And how can squids and octopi have gone from sharing an ocean to fighting on land? Could this just be Nintendo creating a fantasy world to place a colorful game within? Or is there something deeper to this game than meets the eye? Perhaps submerged in all of this color Colorful liquid is a dire message just dying to be found. To find out, let's wipe off the ink-stained facts of Agent 3's journey and squirt out the story you never knew. Agent 3 gets recruited by Captain Cuttlefish as part of the new Squidbeak Splatoon because a devastating crisis has hit Inkopolis. The Great Zapfish has been stolen. All of the electrical gadgets in this metropolitan hangout will soon be rendered useless without Agent 3's help. The Zapfish supply electricity to all of the buildings and electronics in the city, which slightly concerns me. I'm all for animal rights and whatnot, but how exactly do I plug my phone into this? Captain Cuttlefish explains that the Octarians must have stolen the Zapfish as retribution for their loss in the Great Turf War, and that they must be brought to swift justice. Here is our first clue as to what is happening in this stained world. A turf war, as defined by the most credible source on the internet, Urban Dictionary, is a war in which the principal ammunition is clods of soil and grass, usually propelled with the hands. Okay, that didn't really help like I thought it would. But we can infer that the turf wars are fought on land, so some great war was fought on land between water creatures, not land creatures. Glad to see everything's already making no sense. Now back to our hero. Agent 3 travels through various stages, gunning and squidding her way to victory. She splats through a series of ever-climbing levels, freshening up her paint colors along the way. In each level, Agent 3 finds these hidden treasures called sunken scrolls, meaning that these scrolls have been submerged in the ocean for a presumably long time. These scrolls tell tales of the past or can be used as upgrades for our slippery protagonist. Let's take a look at the fourth scroll in the game. It gives a description and outline regarding turf wars. Apparently they've been around for at least 2,000 years. Hot diggity! You mean these squid guys have been doing this shit for centuries? Then just what year is it exactly? We'll have to progress further if we ever hope to find out. Agent 3 tackles level after level, continually climbing until… Ugh. Is that a UFO? We're going into a UFO? Don't they usually just suck you up by your chest? Or in this case, by your tentacles? This flying saucer is the mothership of the Octarians, and it must be the location of the captured Great Zapfish. Sure enough, the Great Zapfish appears within the flying ship, only to be engulfed by... Oh my god! This beat is incredible! Oh, sorry. I, I got carried away by the sheer awesomeness of this boss battle. Agent 3 fights against none other than DJ Octavio! This guy mixes some fresh beats with some tasty kelp. Like a sub-aqua salad. Mmm. 
You can tell Nintendo was trying to hit the younger generation with this guy. A DJ? As the final boss? Well played, Nintendo. Well played. DJ Noodley Arms gives Agent 3 a run for her money. His set is powered by the great Zapfish with lights flying and seizure warnings in mass effect. Agent 3 continually inks Octavio's attacks back at him until the DJ is all out of juice. With the great Zapfish saved and electricity restored, we can finally take a look back at all the wet scrolls we've collected. A quick look through them shows that the past has quite a history, and the most redundant sentence award goes to... Tricycle for confirming that the past has a history. All jokes aside, look at this scroll. Its diagram shows that the Inklings actually started as squids and evolved into bipeds, just as apes evolved into humans. But that must mean this world cannot be based on the same one we live in now. Humans would still be around, and I don't think we'd be mating with squids. I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible. There's way too much tentacle porn in the world to say that. But I think we can assume more often than not that humans don't really want to bang sea creatures, no matter how wet they are. So squids must have evolved to breathe air and be able to transform from a biped to whatever the scientific word for squid is. And the same should go for octopi. Both creatures must have evolved over long periods of time to go through as many stages as are shown in this scroll. It most likely took thousands and thousands of years. This scroll shows some tasty sushi. Um, why would a squid or octopus eat sushi? That's cannibalism. Squidabilism? The description says that an ancient race ate this delicacy. But wait, we eat sushi. Oh no, that can't be right. Humans wouldn't have died out. How could they? No, this scroll says that we paid no heed to the warnings of rising sea levels. And this one shows a human skeleton with a Wii controller. My god, I'm forced to admit it. This is our world, 12,000 years in the future. The sea levels rose up, destroying our society as we know it, and the Inklings and Octarians fought over the remaining land after we'd all turned to dust. Why would you do this, Nintendo? This is a kid's game, and you keep telling everyone to be fresh! What does that even mean? The truth is, this game is no game at all. Nintendo is sending us a harsh message masked in a vibrant, colored world. While we all sit around playing our games and enjoying our freedom on land, the ocean levels are rising, climate change is happening, and Nintendo is trying to warn us before it's too late. Those of us who live inland may be okay for a while, but Nintendo is based out of Japan. Their homes are really just a bunch of islands just waiting to be swallowed up by the gradual rising of the seas. This is no light-hearted game. It's a plea for help, a prediction of the future where everything can be colorful and fresh because we're all gone. This is by far the most politically charged statement Nintendo has ever made in a title. The quest we go through with Agent 3 isn't meant to just be fun. It's meant to open our eyes to the larger issues surrounding our society today. Just look at who this game is driven towards. Kids, teens, the younger generations, the people who will grow up to inherit this planet and the problems that plague it. Nintendo did its best to hide the truth of this game away by packaging it in crazy hues and fun experiences. When in reality, Splatoon is a cry for our younger generations to learn about our planet and do what is necessary to save human existence. Splatoon, this beautifully messy game targeted at our younger generation seems like just another one of Nintendo's silly fantasy worlds on the surface. But through Agent 3's wherewithal and trigger-happy treasure hunting, we can uncover the dark message behind Nintendo's vivid colors. Agent 3 is just a catalyst, the tool used to decode this game piece by piece, scroll by scroll, to find the hidden meaning within. The message we find is not just about spraying everything with paint, but that we are dying. Our world is slowly collapsing while we splash each other with paint. Nintendo is reaching out to as many people as it can to push these hard truths onto us in the easiest way possible. We play these games and usually miss out on the main point, but not in this one. Agent 3 is uncovering our future one scroll at a time, and it's our duty to take action in our real world so it doesn't become Nintendo's fantasy world. 
Agent 3 is a hero, not because she recovers the great Zapfish, but because she helps us find a message of far more importance. And that's the story you never knew. Hey friendly internet folks, thanks for watching, we really hope you enjoyed the video. And don't forget to subscribe. But what if I don't want to? No, what are you waiting for? Do it! Um, uh, don't forget about our new series, The Truth Maybe, check it out. I'm not convinced. Just do it! Oh, okay, okay, let's go, let's go.